today on our first episode of Well, we're going to discuss a topic that I hear never discussed at all. And I'll probably put a different spin on things. And this just comes from the heart, from my personal experience, and from a lot, I mean a lot of experience in this particular area. And the topic of the day is going to be deliberate parenting. Now, you know, it's not a topic that's discussed nearly enough. And in this day and time, I think it's very important to really understand what it is that I mean by deliberate parenting. Now, I became a parent. Me and my wife, we have we have um, four children between us. Awesome children. You know, um, three of them are step, my stepchildren. And um, one is my biological child. And but I have four children and we have we have 13 grandchildren. OK, so with that being said, that doesn't include the amount of children that we've been a part of um, caretaking and helping raise over the past you know, 25 years or what have you, plus being a part of helping to raise my nieces and nephews that are a little bit older. And, you know, so, you know, most of my life has been spent dealing with and helping to, you know, raise children, be involved in children from birth, you know, up until their adult lives. And one thing that I've come to understand and just by, you know, in dealing with my father and seeing how he's parented, you know, all these years, my whole life to be exact, you know, I I came to understand something early in, early in my life as a young man, that when I became a parent, it was imperative that I was a deliberate parent, that I intentionally did things to, with, and for my children that were more important than even the things that I wanted to do for them. There were certain things that had to be done that I knew were, that had to be intentional. And I couldn't I consider that to be deliberate parenting. What that means is instead of, you know, focusing on the popular of, you know, coveting your children and giving them, you know, above and beyond, you know, and, and really over spoiling them. You know, I always had a, a you know, a, a realistic you know vision that you know I want to give them as much as I can. But the reality of it is I have to be very deliberate. And so. That means not over coddling, not over, you know, not making them the center of the universe, which is, you know, a popular concept that that happened back in, I say that the 80s, you know, when children became the center of the of the world and of the home and of the family, as opposed to the hierarchy of, you know, you know, God, father, mother, you know, children on down. No, the, the center of the family became the children and the whole entire focus became the children. Well, here's the thing. That is a broken structure. That is a broken structure that has reaped horrible benefits for us as a culture and brings us to this day that we're living in now where children are coveted higher than the parents, than, than even God in households. You know, the children is the, is, is, is the sole focus. Well, here's the thing. As parents, it is our job, our obligation, our responsibility to take care of, to, to, to grow, to feed, to, to nurture, to love our children, but not to covet them as if they are supposed to stay in our house for the rest of their life. They're not. Our job is to raise adults, to raise functional, you know, happy, joyful, productive citizens for the world. Our job is not to you know, raise a prize for us to keep in our pocket for the rest of our lives that 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 we cherish and covet as an extension of of us to be that thing that we wish we could have been, you know, that prettier version of ourselves or whatever or whatever we think that it may be, you know, when it comes to raising our children. Our children are an extension of us, but they are the extension that we're supposed to grow, feed, nurture, and send off into the world. You know, one of the um, quotes that I have, you know, you can tell if you're a good parent if when your children are grown, you never talk to them, you know, because the reality of it is if they're functional, if they're productive, you know, when they go out into the world, they literally go out into the world. You know, here's the thing. There was a time and place when you raised your children and they got on ships and they went to a whole nother continent, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, by themselves, you know, when they were 17 or 18 years old and went off to fight in wars and so forth. You know, this is a real thing. This happened. This this occurred. 
Well, fast forward to the day when you have a lot of parents that refuse to even let their children walk across the street. Well, by themselves or, or, or to, to make any decision by themselves, to be out of, you know, cell phone range by themselves, to be able to, you know, you know, make mistakes by themselves, you know. So back to deliberate parenting. When we're deliberately being a parent to our child, raising them up, you know, the, the one thing I love about 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 the word of God and, and, you know, as I talk in, you know, in a lot of podcasts, you know, you'll, you'll understand, you know, my faith is what leads me. But my conversations are, you know, are are every day, you know, real life. But the bottom line about what the word of God says is he says, you know, fathers, you know, anger, not your children to wrath, lest they be discouraged. Now, this really impacted me as a parent, not early in my parenting. But later in my parenting, after we went through a lot of hurdles, after, you know, you know, we went through, you know, why is this kid keep acting like this, keep acting like this, keep acting like this. And as God got to working on me and see, here's the thing, you know, when I had kids, when I first had kids, I was not saved. I was not a Christ follower. I did not know the word of God. So as I started to learn the word of God and started to, you know, really, you know, I mean, we, you know, we, we raised children through teenagers and, you know, everything before I even started serving the Lord. So it's not always been a part of my parenting, but deliberate parenting has always been a part of my parenting. So there's, there's a distinction there. But as I got into the word and, and, and I read the word, when I first read that myself, I felt convicted because I was like, anger, not your children to wrath. Oh, what does that mean to me? I don't care if they're getting mad at me. Well, here's the thing. What God was showing me and telling me was, you know, when it comes to raising your children, no matter which ones are harder to deal with than others, you know, anger not your children to wrath, lest they be discouraged. It took a long time. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys all something, to be honest with you. That particular passage, it took me quite a long time to digest it, to understand it, to for God to work it in me. And I, when I say a long time, I mean quite a while. It just it, it, it did not happen overnight. It didn't happen over a week. It didn't happen over a month. I dare say it took more than a year for that to really sink into me. I'd heard it before. But for it to really sink in and, and, and for me to understand, OK, now I understand, you know, as a father, my job is to set a standard, to hold a standard. But to understand each individual child, you know, has a tolerance level, has a tolerance level. And I'm to work to that tolerance level, not to exceed, not to press it, not to break them. As a father, my job is not to break them, it's to prepare them, it's to cultivate them, but not to break them. You know, to strengthen them, but not break them. And every single child is different. Every single child is different. This is back to being deliberate. You know, our job is not to break them. Our job is to make them. You know, unlike a lot of things in, in life and in the world, when we go and deal with other people, you know, we don't deal with the world as we deal with parenting, as we deal with our children, and nor should we. But the reality of it is, this is where the massive exercise in grace comes in at, because as we're deliberately raising our children, we have to learn to employ a great amount of grace that we didn't even know was in us, that we didn't even know was capable. You know, when, you're, when your child, you know, breaks a window or, or, you know, a neighbor's window, I did that as a child myself, so, you know, I understand. When, when your child does something, you know, you know, gets, you know, old enough to, you know, steal the car or something, the, how you deal with it is going to play a huge role in the development of that child for the rest of their life. You know, they're going to always remember how you dealt with them at this time on this particular situation. So it's imperative that we're deliberate that, you know, and as, as, as grandparents now, we're hearing, you know, from our children, which we, you know, we saw each one of our children, you know, when they became parents, every one of our children struggled and was a surprise to us because we just assumed, you know, because our children, you know, I, I can honestly say we, we, you know, our children are awesome adults, are awesome humans. I, I don't just love them, but I like them as people, <laughs> you know, which is a bit as a, as a big thing. It's a big hurdle to get over. When I look at when I look at this deliberate parenting through all the struggles that we've gone through, I can honestly say that all of my children are awesome citizens, regardless. Sure, they're not exactly where I want to see all of them. Sure, here's the reality, though. They're awesome citizens. They're awesome they're they're productive, they're producing, they're able to, you know, they are they are great neighbors. They are I I I just I tell you, 
you know, the reality of it is I, I could not thank God more for the, the, the adult, you know, the adult children that we have now. And sure, we have a lot of regrets. We wish we'd have done this. We wish we could have done that. We wish this. We wish that. Sure, a lot of wants got left on the table. But here's the thing. The fact that we were deliberate and have been deliberate in, in, in our children has produced, has produced some awesome human beings who are now parents themselves and producing awesome human beings. Sure, there's plenty of struggles. Nobody's where, you know, where they want to be, where we want them to be. There's a lot of work to do externally, but internally, internally with the deliberate parenting that, you know, we you know, and we're still growing ourselves. You know, we're still growing ourselves. We're still learning and, you know, learning ourselves. And, you know, there's still a lot of growth within ourselves. But when I look back, I don't, you know, when I look at, when I look at, okay, the father that I am and the father that I was, what parental regrets do I have? For a while, I was like, oh, I didn't get to do this for my kid. I didn't get to do that for my kid. But as I, you know, over the past several years, and I've really looked back and I'm like, oh, okay, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. We did that. Oh, we did that. Oh, our child went through the, oh, we did that. You know, and when I look at them today as adults and talk to them today as adults, the level of respect that they show, the level of respect that they have is, is in today's world. I mean, I, I, let me specify. In today's world is, is really extraordinary compared to what we see from, from almost everybody else, every other child and adult. Our children are the most, you know, they, 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 they are productive. They are strong. They are awesome. They have great hearts. They are, they are, you know, they're gentle, but they're fighters. I mean, I tell you, I could, I, I could sit here and dote on them all day long, but the reality of it is they're still growing and they're raising children that are still growing. And so, you know, our oldest grandchild is 15. Our youngest is a month old, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and, and all in between. And, you know, and they're all growing up in different areas and different, you know, parts of the you know state and so forth. We're in Indiana. You know, they're in different cultures and some in the rural community, some in the, in, the, in the urban community, you know, and just totally different cultures. Every one of them is growing up in a different culture than the other. But the basis of their parenting of their parents and the basis of, you know, us as a parenting stronghold until this day, you know, we're coaches. We consult on a regular basis. You know, we're here whenever they call, you know, and I mean, as they see us still growing, see, we're still growing. You know, we're still growing, but we're deliberately parenting all the way, you know, that we go. And we've been deliberately parent parenting, you know, from 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 way back. And so back to, you know, being a deliberate parent means, you know, really being focused on not just the wants for the child and not just the needs, but the balance. And not only that, but not letting the world around us dictate the right way to rear a child. You know, there's some fundamentals, whether whether, you know, whether you have, you know, whether you have a faith or, or not, or whether you're agnostic, what, what have you. There are some fundamentals to raising children. There's some fundamentals to being a human, you know, and when you focus on the fundamentals, you know, shelter, food, safety, um, you know, decency, love, you know, affection, you know, um, um, strength, you know, just all these different things. You know, there are fundamentals, no matter what culture you're in, no matter what part of the world you're in, there are fundamentals to rearing children. And one thing that I've seen for years is the deliberate nature of growing a, a healthy, productive, and I'm going to remove happy, but a healthy, productive member of society. Because here's the thing, we got into a point where we want to, you know, focus on happiness. Happiness comes from being healthy and productive. I'm going to be honest with you. If you focus on happiness first and focus on just trying to be happy, you're not going to be good for the citizens around you. The reality of it is true happiness comes from being healthy and productive and helpful and, and being able to feed into the culture. That's where true happiness comes from. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to stand on that hill. I'm going to die on that hill. True happiness comes from being a strong, productive, healthy citizen, 
not from just being happy and selfish and self-indulged and only focusing on yourself. So this was, you know, today's first episode is deliberate parenting. And, you know, it may sound like a rant, as you'll, as you'll see, you know, with, with my podcast, you know, you're going to see my personality. Sometimes you're going to hear, you know, like he's really coming off. I don't know, but you're going to see my genuine personality when I'm having these conversations with, 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 with you, the listeners, with people in, you know, in, in real time, when I interview with people, you know, this is just, this is the tone for the directness of what I'm talking about. And here on Well, you know, we're going to stay focused on the directness. You know, some of these things might hit you in the throat. I don't know. You know, but the reality of it is it all comes from a sincere place. You know, and I thank God that I'm able to produce this and able to create this and give this out and hopefully give somebody some help, a glimmer of, of, of understanding, maybe a way of looking at things and saying, huh, you know what, you know, well, you know, there's a point here, point that, well, that I don't, you know, well, you know, I never thought of it that way. Well, you know, here's another thought. But so today's first episode of Well brought to you by Food by the Word Media. And, you know, we look forward to bringing you many, many more. Um, we're going to fill up um, our our, our um, YouTube channel, you know, that we've had for years. We got, you know, some other videos there. But, you know, this podcast, Wells, is, is, is going to be really exciting. And as we get into 2023, it's going to be ridiculously exciting. Like I say, I'm going to be all over the place. You know, I'm going to be all over the place and it's going to be fun and it's going to, you know, it's going to be insightful. I have a whole list of some very, <laughs> very interesting topics, you know, and none of them are going to be boring. None of them are going to be boring. So thanks for joining us here. Well, you know, I hope, I hope you, you know, you look at it, you know, you, you hear something that makes you say, well, I never thought of it that way. Well, that's an interesting insight. And let's have a conversation. You know, leave some comments. You know, make sure to, you know, subscribe to the channel, you know, click the bell for alerts. And, you know, I look forward to talking to you later. Talk to you later. God bless you. Well, have a great day.